This is Ophelia, a painting by John Everett Millay about Ophelia from Shakespeare's play Hamlet. Distressed after Prince Hamlet has broken their engagement and killed her father, Ophelia wanders the countryside looking for flowers and falls into a stream and drowns. Millay was just 22 and the most radical painter of his day. He had spent five summer months sitting by the Hogsmill River in Surrey, painting every leaf and ripple from nature. In the winter of 1852, in his studio, he painted in the central character. Millet's model, posed in a bath, is a young artist and poet called Elizabeth Siddle. What was Siddle thinking while she lay still for so many hours. Surely the two artists talked. Millet's easel was positioned close by. He must have leaned in to study the change in Siddle's hair as it passed under the water. The gleams on the silver dress, each individual lash. As he painted, the candles keeping the water warm died out. Millet failed to notice, and Siddle remained still in the cooling water. When she became ill with cold, Millet was blamed. In the future, historians find parallels between the drowning Ophelia and Siddle's submission to the chilling bath. Siddle could not have known how entangled her own story would become with the painting. This is the story of the real Ophelia. Elizabeth Siddle was 19 years old, training at an art school and working as a seamstress. She was not beautiful by Victorian standards, but her boyish appearance and abundant coppery hair attracted a group of progressive artists called the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. Several of them hired her as a model, which brought her closer to the art world. Siddle's own career as an artist progressed she was tutored by the charismatic Dante Gabrielle Rossetti, and the art critic John Ruskin proclaimed her a genius and bought all of her work. Women artists did not have the same access to models as men did, so she painted herself. Victorian society looked down upon working women, especially artists and models. Warnings of what might happen to these women appeared in popular culture. They were depicted as fallen women, who often came to tragic ends, frequently drowning in a polluted river. Millet saw a parallel between these images and Shakespeare's Ophelia, who is rejected after Hamlet accuses her falsely of being impure. Millet underlined the innocence of his heroine by changing the polluted city river to a country stream. Ophelia's gown associated with her betrayed marriage, is at odds with the natural world around her. Her hair, on the other hand, has come loose and flows freely with the current. For Millet, nature represented truth and redemptive cycles of life and death. Siddle and Rossetti married eight years later. The delay may have been her choice, it meant surrendering her independence. It would be another 20 years before the law allowed wives to keep their own earnings. And like all Victorian women, marriage faced Siddle with the dangers of pregnancy and birth before modern medicine. A miscarriage affected her physical and mental health, and not long after, at only 32, she died from an overdose of the opiate laudanum. Afterwards, a bereft Rossetti painted Siddle at the moment of death. He remembers her as his muse, the object of desire. In the decades that followed, the public's imagination entwined Ophelia and Siddle. History typed them both as victims of love, mentally fragile, and their deaths were assumed to be suicide. 
And while Siddle's death became legendary, her poems, drawings, and watercolors, her courage were forgotten. The painting came to represent the feminine myth that she and Millet had challenged. And Ophelia has inspired countless other images of fateful women adrift. Siddle is remembered in this passive role, whose purpose was to inspire men, not to aspire to greatness herself. As one art historian put it, she is framed forever by that bath.